Hey, so welcome back and it's another Leco problem today. So what we're gonna do is a popular question from Tesla that uses backtracking. And so what we're given here is an array. And so all that we wanna do is we want to maximize the output. So it's a maximization problem where we're essentially just returning an integer that represents basically the maximum length of a string that we're able to create here. Okay, and so in order to create this string, there's some rules that kind of restrict us in how we do it. But essentially, the first thing is we have to create it um, using these strings in this array that's supplied to us. And so we want to basically concatenate these strings together such that we're able to build the longest um, string of all unique characters, okay? And so in this case, the simple answer is either un u or un iq or we could have done like iq ue and so that's by concatenating the first two or the second two the reason why we can't also include like uh, say if we went with the first approach we couldn't also include a ue here because we already have the letter u and so that will cause a duplicate which isn't a fully unique string so the second example here, the result would be CHA and ERS or ACT and ERS. If you include any other ones outside of those two particular uh, possible pairs, you'd be introducing duplicates. So in this case, we would return six. Now, how do we actually solve this problem? Like that's intuitively how we did ourselves, but how do we write this programmatically is the question. And so typically what we just did literally is we tried every single possible combination um, and just seen, okay, let's try every combination. And if this combination is valid, let's take the length and can keep going and just keep track of what the maximum length that we've seen so far. And if we found a new maximum length, um, then we'll use that instead. Okay, so basically to do that programmatically, uh, the typical like solution, especially recursively, is to write like some backtracking code, which is just a very common uh, leak code pattern that you typically have to write. There's a lot of blueprint code out there where you kind of write the same repetitive code over and over again. Uh, so this is a great problem for being able to identify backtracking like solutions, as well as just like really understanding how to write backtracking code. And so that's what we're going to do uh, today. So. Uh, once again, this backtracking code is going to let us try every single uh, possible combination here uh, and just continuously uh, compare their outputs. And so generally, you have to define a backtracking pattern um, or function here, sorry, uh, where we, first we're going to supply the index of like what's the current string we're looking at, as well as basically an empty set that's going to represent what is the current string that we're building so far and what letters does it contain? Okay, so essentially with each iteration, we're gonna start at index zero here and say if we're given the letters like A is the first string and then the second one's like B, C. And so we could either choose to include it or not to include it. And so that would result in being at index one now with the letter A, or we could be at index one now with still an empty string because we start out empty. Uh, once again, this path would repeat here where constantly you're always making these two decisions of do I want to include the next one or exclude it? If we included it, we'll now be at the second index and would we'll basically be A, B, C here. Otherwise, if we didn't include it, we'll still be at the second um, and it would still be A, right? I won't fill out uh, the rest here, but essentially uh, from this point on, uh, it would stop because we basically hit the edge case here and we would basically return the length of this um, the length of this string here, right? Which would be three, and so we return that result up. But we're basically comparing the length of all of these possible paths here. All right, so how do we actually define uh, that base case, which is typically the first thing you want to do um, in a recursive function here? And so we're going to say, okay, if the current index that we're looking at is basically the last index in our array, then we're just going to return the length of our current set that we're looking at. All right, otherwise there is a edge case here. And so that's going to be basically something like AA 
or say the string is like C V uh, C. And so you can see that there's duplicates here. And so we don't want to introduce those. And so to check for that, um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is just for simplicity, let's just write out, okay, this is the current string that we're looking at, at index i, as well as the uh, uh, new set that we're looking at introducing. So basically the set of that string. So set of current index at i. And so what we can say is, okay, if the length of the string is not equal to the length of the set, then we know that there's a duplicate. And I'll explain why in a second here. Uh, but what we would want to return is basically just recursively call the next index with the same set because we didn't add anything. And so the way this works is, okay, because the set data structure deduplicates all of the uh, letters in a string, um, if it deduplicated the string, and it no longer has the original length, then that must mean that there was duplicates, okay? And so otherwise, if we get past this edge case, uh, we're going to want to consider both paths only if um, we're introducing a string that keeps the unique property that we're looking to um, keep a hold of. Otherwise, if we're introducing duplicates, then we can only choose to ignore it, okay? So it's basically two paths of, we can either look down both paths or we can only consider the one path of not including it. And so in order to do that, let's go ahead and find out if what we're going to be introduce, introducing is still going to allow us to maintain a unique uh, set here. And so we can say, all right, so if the length of our current set um, is equal to the length of the current set uh, while excluding the uh, new set, then that must mean that they're unique. And so what this really means is, say if the current set is um, A here, and the um, this is the current, and then the new set that we're looking at introducing is like B, C. And so what we're doing here is we're basically taking the difference of these two sets, which is like a subtraction. We're saying, let's get rid of any letters in here from our current set. And then we're basically taking the length of it and seeing, okay, did we lose anything from this current set? And if we did, then there was duplicates. Otherwise, it's unique. Okay, and so from here, we can basically say, okay, um, if it's unique, we're going to go down one path. Otherwise, we're going to go down the other path. So if it's not unique, we're essentially, we can only choose to ignore it which is essentially just this path uh, here, okay? Otherwise, we don't have to choose to ignore it, and so we're just going to take the maximum, because it's a maximization function or a maximization problem, of either choosing to ignore it or we can choose to include it by basically just unioning uh, these two sets together. All right, so let's try um, running that. Oh, looks like I got an error, but we'll see. It's not subscriptable. So set of the current, ah, so I don't mean current, I mean array, sorry. I hope that didn't confuse you too much, but the array. There we go. And success, so that's today's uh, LeetCode problem. So essentially what we're going to have is a time complexity of two to the power of n for both uh, time and space complexity. And so that's because at every single point here, we're going to have to go down two paths of either choosing to include it or choosing to exclude it uh, for basically n where n is the length of this array here. Okay, so because we're constantly having to make two decisions down this um, um, recursive tree that we're kind of building out here, uh, it's going to be that time complexity. Same with space complexity because it's a recursive function. And so we could have essentially at most that many um, recursive calls on our application stack uh, that basically is causing that use of memory. All right, so yeah, I hope it helped a little bit. Um, good luck with the rest of your uh, leak code pra uh, problems and practicing, um, and feel free to follow for more. So let me know if you want me to do anything else, all right? Awesome, see you later.